The NFL has questions. College football has a headache due to all the complications from COVID-19. First, there's the obvious challenge of trying to keep teams safe, but then there's the scheduling and logistical concerns. Tennessee State was the first program impacted when its first two games of the season were canceled back in June. The Big Ten and Pac-12 have gone to conference-only seasons, while several smaller leagues have canceled fall sports altogether. The SEC's delayed the start of sports other than football for now, but says more concrete decisions will come later this month. Dr. Ray McLean is the chief medical officer at LCR Health in California and one of the leading sports medicine minds in our country, and he joins us now. Dr. McLean, thanks for coming on. Two weeks ago, I would have said there was a 99% chance we would see football played this fall. Now I'm not nearly as positive on that, and a big reason why is it seems every discussion around the ability to play football this year is centered around the belief that if we play football, we're going to have positive tests. Therefore, we shouldn't play to limit the number of positives. But do we think not playing means no one in football tests positive? No, I mean, that's the, that's the issue is that the assumption is bad. We, we expect to see positives, of course. That's the whole function of the testing, especially at the initiation of the season where we're entering into whatever you want to call it. If it's a bubble or the more strict protocols, that's that's the function of the testing to weed out those that are already positive so that continuing forward, we don't have to worry about it as, as much anymore. The, the initial positives are not a concern. If they continue, that will be more of a concern. It appears in all of those positive tests we've heard about so far in the sports world, they've been asymptomatic or extremely mild. How concerned are you about the severity and long lasting effects for athletes that contract this virus? Well, that's more of a tough question to answer because on the one hand, yes, we're dealing with a group that's least likely to be, you know, affected too negatively, to, certainly not to be gravely ill. But what we don't know is that if these guys do get asymptomatic infections or mild infections, is there the chance that there might be permanent damage? It doesn't seem that way. And it looks like the people that suffer the most are the ones that we have been touting as the most at risk, the over 65, the ones with what we call comorbidities like COPD, lung issues already, diabetes, et cetera, that the healthy people so far tend to be doing well by and large, but that is an unknown. All right, doctor. So what's your gut feel? Will we see the NFL and will we see college football this fall? NFL, I'd put money down on it for sure, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that we're also finding more treatment possibilities available. But when it comes to college football, one of the things I've said all along is you're dealing with college athletes and it's an age group in which people tend to take more risks. And I think some of the schools have taken that into consideration and punted, no pun intended. But uh, I think for good reason, you know, the, the execution of the protocols are just as important as the design of the protocols. So if you know up front, the execution is likely not to be there. I can see going ahead and canceling again to err on the side of caution. But NFL, absolutely, I believe they're going to continue. And Dr. Ray McLean, thank you so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate the knowledge. Good stuff. My pleasure as always. Thank you.